Okay, welcome back to AP Statistics. Again, I have no affiliation with the College Board. I just teach high school statistics where I'm known as Dr. Kling. And today we're going to talk about the multiplication rule for independent events. The multiplication rule for independent events. So suppose I wanted to call on students at random. And if there are just two students in the class, I could just flip a coin. And if the coin came up heads, I would call on you and the point <coughs> had if the coin came up tails I would call on the other student so your probability of being called on would be 0.5 now suppose that there were six students in the class and I wanted to call on people at random well I could roll a dice and I'll just call it a die roll a die and let's say I call on you if I get a six then the probability of being called on is then one sixth. So then I'll write one half. Okay, so now suppose that there were twelve people in the class. Then I could <coughs> flip a coin and roll a die, and I would call on you. Call on you if I get a heads, and roll a six. So we could call it event A get a heads, event B, get a six, probability of A is equal to one and a half, probability of B is equal to one sixth, probability of A and B equals the probability of A times the probability of B, that's our multiplication rule, equals one half times one sixth equals one twelfth. And that's, so that's not surprising. I said I was going to, we were going to have 12 people in the class. I was going to call on them at random. And so I was going to flip a coin. And your chances of being, flip a coin and roll a dice. And your chances of being called on were 1 out of 12. That is only if I get a heads with the coin and get a 6 uh, with the dice. Okay, so what it would happen if we had 24 people in the class? Then we could roll two coins, flip two coins, and roll one dice. And, the, and we could just say that if you get a heads on the first coin, a heads on the second coin, and a six on the dice, then you get called on. If you get a heads, heads, and five, someone else gets called on. Heads, heads, and four, someone else, and so on. And so we have the probability of getting a heads is one half times the probability of getting a heads is one half times the probability of rolling a six on the die is one sixth, and you get one twenty fourth. So if there are twenty four students in a class, this rule would give you a one twenty fourth chance of being the one picked. If you were the one picked, if we got a heads, a heads, and a six, and then if we get a heads, heads, and five, someone else gets picked, and so on. Okay, go back to the rule probability of A and B. This thing is an ampersand sign. It's a way of writing and. I don't write it too well, but that's what it's supposed to be. It's probability of A and B both occurring, and you multiply A and B. You might think, okay, that's great. You've mastered that. Let me give you a trick question. Suppose we're rolling a dice and event A is that you get an even number on the dice, and event B <coughs> is that you get a number, a, a big number, meaning a number of four, five, or six. So an even number, um, number four, five, or six. So the probability of A is a half. That is, half the numbers are even probability of B is a half, that is 4, 5, or 6, that's half the numbers, the others are 1, 2, and 3. So you'll think, well, probability of A and B, so using my new rule, is probability of A times probability of B equals 1 half times 1 half equals 1 fourth. But when you think about it, the probability of, when you roll a dice, of getting an even number that's 4, 5, or 6, 
Well, there you can either get a 4 or a 6, and that's out of 6 numbers, so the probability is equal to 1 third. So what went wrong? What's wrong with our multiplication rule, which seems so handy? Well, the problem is that getting a 4, 5, or 6 and getting an even number on the same dice roll are not independent events. You only can use the multiplication rule when the events are independent. So if I rolled two different dice, rolled one dice to see whether we got something that was even, and then another dice to see what completely different die, and asked whether we got a 4, 5, or 6, then we would have independent events, and then the one-fourth would be the right answer. But if I ask this question about the same dice, they're not independent events. So that's, a, that's an important part of this. And finally, I will note that what happens when you have multiple independent events with the same probability, with the same probability. So let's say there were 13 students in the class, and our rule was to uh, pick cards, assign numbers to each student. So one student would be called on if I draw an ace, another one if I draw a king, another one if I draw a ten, another one if I draw a nine, and so on. And so let's say you're the person with the ace. Uh, that is, I'll call on you if you get if we, if I draw an ace. So you have a one thirteenth chance. Well, what are you? What are your chances of being called on the next two times in a row? Well, it's one thirteenth times one thirteenth. Now we're going to assume here that I'm that after I draw a card, I shuffle it, I put it back in the deck and shuffle it. So what are your chances of being called on three times? Well, that would be one thirteenth and then multiplying again times one thirteenth times one thirteenth and in general with multiple independent events with a probability of p in this case p equals one thirteenth the probability of getting n successes is equal to p to the nth power so we'll be using that uh, in our next talk so it's p to the nth but remember that these have to be independent events, each with the same probability. If, when I drew a card, instead of putting it back in the deck and shuffling it, I set it aside, then after the first time you get, let's say you, you get called on, then there's, there are no longer as many aces in the deck, and so the probability of the next time isn't one thirteenth. So you have to have independent events. So, Remember the formula p to the n for multiplying the same independent events.